Let's have a look at a different kind of sky then, a stormy sky. And I've mixed a little Theo Violet with the uh, French Ultramarine mix that I had to start with. You see it's quite darker, a purpley colour. I'm just blocking in some areas here. You can, with a flat brush like this, use the paint off one side. I'm using uh, a flat number four brush, bristle brush. Paint still on the other side, turn it over, use that paint so you get two goes for the price of one. There we are. Now try, when, when you're doing a stormy sort of a sky, to leave some texture. Get uh, a little bit of loose brushwork in. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get progressively cooler towards the horizon and then work over it. Get some really nasty, fearsome looking clouds uh, coming in. Painting quite briskly and Constable and Turner used to do dozens and dozens and dozens of these. And um, I know for a fact that Constable used to paint on old packing case lids. Uh, so we're not out of order at all by painting on primed cardboard. He used to prime his with uh, a mixture of white lead and pumice stone, but we've got an acrylic gesso, which is cheaper and easier to prepare. Rather nice. Now at the moment, this is just loose brushwork. We want some sky up here that looks thundery, so I'm using a darker purple up here, even with a bit of violet or red in it to get these stormy storm clouds coming down. A little bit of blue there, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, there we are. So, so I've used titanium white, which is quite a cold white, and some Naples yellow, just to give us some idea of a little bit of lightness. And because we want to give the impression that there is some light, we can also pick out the side of one of these clouds, maybe just a little ridge, maybe there of some, some light shining through. And then very pale at the bottom. And then we'll have our hill. I can use almost the same colour as I've done for the top dark bit of cloud on the sky. Just warm it up a little put a little more of the uh, purple in and let's have a hill. There. Now if you're painting an early morning scene with the sun just rising we want very pale pastely colours and I'm using a pale very pale purpley violet made with French ultramarine and a little Theo violet and a lot of titanium white. And again, getting rid of the paint gradually. Notice how I'm turning the flat brush over to use up both sides. Painting it down. Uh, put enough paint on, this is a secret. And a little paler colour coming down. I'm going to give the impression that there is a light on the uh, sky from the bottom left hand side. So progressively staying dark towards the top right hand corner so we can actually put a little darker back up there. And it's sort of dawn creeping up. Here we are. So we don't want to uh, have it too runny at this stage. Fairly um, thin layers but uh, not very liquid coming down gradually and uh, pulling it back here. I can blend that darker colour back in later on and almost white but not quite down near the bottom here and uh, maybe even a few rays of light appearing to come up from there. We go back into our dark colour now and paint the top here as if the light hasn't quite got to it. See, I'm blending by just stroking and stroking and stroking until the colours mix, actually on the surface of the, the board here. Gradually working down. Very soft focus sort of shot, morning shots. And I think we'll have a, a townscape on this one, a pale blue. And we'll just put in a couple of little silhouettes of buildings in the morning.
and it's hazy, it's not very distinct. Nothing in the morning is early dawn is going to be that sharp. So if you're painting things that are away in the distance, just keep an impression of the buildings, not every line and roof shown. And we're, what we're painting is a quality of light more than anything else here, really. And uh, maybe something like that. A little bit of light catching some of the odds and ends down here. There we are. OK, let's have a look at probably one of the most difficult ones to achieve. And I'm going to show you a sunset. Now, we're starting at the top, very dark, a dark purpley blue. It's a mixture of theo-violet, French ultramarine and a little Naples yellow to make it go grey. And the trick with this is to keep your brush clean in between each of the um, strokes of paint when you change colour. So what I'm going to do is gradate the colour down. I'm going to gradually add a little more red into this mix as I go down so that we've got a reddish hue coming. And I'm just dragging the brush across just to blend the last little remains of that uh, purpley colour, getting just progressively slightly lighter there and um, starting to put on the areas that are going to fade this blue into red and then into a golden colour at the end. So we're working now towards this reddish colour. And the idea is the sun has disappeared. It's almost like the morning one in reverse really. The light is still there. But to avoid the cliché of having horizontal bars of light, we ought to put in some diagonals or some verticals into the sky as we go further down, I think. And some little bands of, of colour coming in. So we can lighten the whole thing now and start to mix up our paler colours. Little flecks catching the sunlight the dying sunlight. Now we can start to go for our yellows and reds nearer the, nearer the horizon, emanating up from the position that the sun set in, maybe. And you also get the undersides of clouds illuminated at sunset. So one or two of these can be actually picked out in light from underneath. It appears that the clouds are being lit from underneath to us down on the surface where we watch the sunsets from. And then very, very pale, the last little couple of dots, very pale, almost white there and blended in. Take it down a little bit. And let's now put in a really dark horizon. Maybe a few trees. And that can be the sunset scene can be reflected. It's always nice to have something warm near the viewer. And with a sunset, the ground is generally fairly dark. So let's just see what it would be like to put maybe a little river or a stream in reflecting the red of the sun. And that will mean that we get a lot of life down here. We can actually get that color back in to the painting near the bottom. So maybe a little reflection or two of the sky down there. to finish it off. Well, we've had a look at skies there and a little bit of the horizon. Let's now look at sort of middle ground. And what happens is most people try and put too much detail in in the distance. And there really isn't any. So let's uh, put in some hedges. And again, hardly any detail at this stage. If we want some trees, we're just using the flat of the brush, dragging it across. This is called scumbling, allowing a lot of the colour to show through from underneath. So no attempt to put in any detail at all. No attempt to put in each individual branch or leaf. Anything at all that looks detailed is going to lead the viewer into thinking this is close. And it's not close, it's distance. Uh, maybe a little dark underneath the trees, just to show that there is some shadows cast working wet in wet. And there, that would be enough to show there's something happening. Now the next hedge may come down from here. And it's 
going to be darker because it's closer. I've put in a little burnt sienna now into my sap green, still using Naples yellow, and where it goes over the background, I'm just painting out, and what we need to do, what we need to learn to do is wipe the brush between each stroke. Can you see I've picked up some of that underpainting there? So you pick up a rag, wipe your brush in between each stroke. OK, let's have a tree in here that goes right up across into the sky. And I'm going to scrape out an impression of some of the, the branches, just to show where the tree actually starts from. This is called scraffito. It's uh, an old traditional oil painting technique, showing the colour of the pinkish underpainting. There we are. There are my branches. I can now put in the foliage and maybe a few dark branches with a side of the brush. Then some Naples yellow and sap green just to put some highlight on some of the, uh, the, the leaves there, the foliage. And the dark area underneath where the hedge is in shadow and the shadow underneath the, the tree there. There we are. Right, let's bring this grassy area around. Again, I'm not going to paint each individual blade of grass. I'm going to give the impression that there is a grassy area coming towards us. And I'm going to enhance that by putting a pathway or a road through in a minute. And uh, teach you something called aerial perspective, which sounds complicated but isn't. A little bright area here wouldn't come amiss. And I'm not going to try and put every individual blade of grass. I'm dragging a dry brush across to make this grass look sparkly make it look like there's some sun catching it. Almost white, a little sap green, some Naples yellow. OK, let's have a little pathway coming down from the distance here in towards the shot, in towards the viewer. And the trick is, as we get nearer to the, the viewer, we need to warm up the colour that we're using. So in the distance, this can be bluish little blue touch there for the perspective. And as we come towards the viewer, we'll add a little pink into it. So we're adding a little pinky colour into this. And gradually that will recede back into the distance. And if we want to, we can maybe scrape a bit of the background colour out, just to put in some an edge or something to it. Well, that's not too bad. Let's have a look at why it works. Compositionally, we've avoided putting the tree right in the middle, which would be boring. And we've put the uh, basic composition, which is sort of an L shape here, about just under a third of the way up and just about a third of the way in. So we've got this shape predominating. That's always quite a good thing to do. Place to avoid, really, is this area to put the focus. And let's just have a look at that composition simplified now. So here is our basic L shape. Um, while you're juggling with compositions and uh, trying to plan uh, a picture, it's a good idea to divide the canvas into thirds uh, with just thin dilute paint um, to help you plan it. I often do a series of little thumbnail sketches, tiny little sketches the size of a matchbox uh, with these lines in so that I know that my uh, composition is going to work before I actually start painting it. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.